Luciano Minetti.
All right, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right, so, so excited to be here. First of all, I want to introduce myself, Luciano. Um, I'm a jazz pianist, and um, I am also into music technology. So I do a little bit of jazz, but a little bit of all styles of music. So I said, how am I going to choose a set to play tonight? It's so much stuff I want to play. So I hope that tonight I'll give you a nice sampling of the music that is most important to me um, with a little bit of a story behind it. Um, and I know that the fun part about this concert is that you're all invited to ask any questions. So please don't hold back, ask anything you want uh, along the way. Um, but first thing, so the song I started out with is There Will Never Be Another You. And that song is important because I auditioned to Rutgers with that song. So I probably wouldn't, wouldn't have studied with Bill. But <laughs> Um, and uh, it also happens to be one of the first jazz tunes I learned how to play. So um, I figured, let me start it off with that. Now, other than Bill in the house tonight also, I want to say I have two teachers here, so the stakes are high. <laughs> so before Bill, for uh, the rest of my life, I studied with only one other person before you, and it is my dad. So my dad is also here. <laughs> Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm going to give you a little talking in between each of these songs, but we're going to continue uh, with some music that I really like that is Brazilian music. And um, one of my other teachers was Fred Hirsch, and he has an album that is just Brazilian music. As you probably, yeah, I see nodding. She knows the album. Uh, and it's a really awesome album. So I'm going to play um, Meditation. It's a Joe Beam tune, and um, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. She said two thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, so I love that. Um, I guess I'll talk a little about the, the playing that I loved when Fred played it. And, uh, and he does some really cool, um, to keep the rhythm going, it's, it's kind of interesting when you play solo piano, because we're used to playing with a full rhythm section, and then the rhythm section's not there, so how do you get the, the groove going? And, uh, and he says, play the melody with your fourth and fifth finger, which I thought was a cool tip. And then you have the rest of your fingers to play the groove, so. So four and five, always for the melody, which I thought was pretty cool <laughs> when I learned that. So. Um, we're going to continue and I'm um, going to take it down a notch now because I've got to put a ballad in there. And, um, and this ballad, I think, was the first ballad I played with Bill when I came to the lesson and it was um, in a sentimental mood. So we're going to you know, just see where it goes and uh, explore a little bit and uh, hope you enjoy. I think the mic's falling. <laughs>
Thank you. All right, so that was uh, in a sentimental mood, and um, yeah, just trying to, to find some uh, something going on, a little groove there, and uh, I think that's one of the, the most frequent things I heard from Professor O'Connell was just try and find something when you sit down. Let's look for something. He always says, come on, give a little something, you know, some changes, some rhythm. Um, so, first of all, I want to pause, because I know this is like an interactive thing. Does anyone have any questions about anything that happened? Yes. I appreciate that. <laughs> that means a lot. Um, so the, when it comes to the groove in this particular you know, arrangement, I, I had an idea of where I wanted to go approximately, but, um, but certainly every time I hit the stage, wh whether I'm playing solo or in a trio, you know, I really don't know <laughs> what's happening when I'm really just trying to find some groove. It's just you're in the, in the music, and, uh, and that's probably the most um, difficult but also liberating part of of improvising music because you're on stage and you have to let go to improvise something nice and 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 hear things but it's really like you're just taken taken away from it you have to just kind of feel it so no i did not know what was going to happen in the middle there but i'm happy that you thought it was in the pocket that's awesome so <laughs> yeah yes i appreciate that yes Ah, <laughs> good question. So I was, um, well, my dad could testify, so, but I think, there he is. <laughs> I think it was like three or four, right? It was like, when you, yeah, and then, but it was just, you know, playing some major chords. I think it was G flat major. I like G flat, you know, nice chord. G flat is a nice try. <laughs> so, I, so, and I did not like it. I, no, I, after that, I started doing lessons, and I tried everything to get out of piano lessons with him. I tried crying. But uh, yeah, everything. But but every every single day after school, but before anything else, it was a piano lesson. And uh, and then when I went to high school, he said, if you want to quit, now you can you can make the choice. <laughs> so then I chose to keep going. But then I found jazz. So started out with classical, and then I really yeah, I really started getting into it in like high school um, high school jazz band. He he had started me, um, but that's when I really felt more connected to the music than with. Um, with classical, you know, and yes, two. Yeah, so I am going to play two originals tonight, um, and uh, the arranging process. Depends on what type of arrangement. So Bill is, is an amazing arranger for, for you know, big band horn sections, and that's one component. This kind of solo piano arrange, arranging has more flexibility. Um, but for example, this one, um, when I would come into a lesson, it was more about just knowing the harmonic possibilities of where you could go with, with a tune. So Bill was very big on that. So for example, in that song is the melody. So like a Bill O'Connell thing would be harmonizing every note of that. So, so, so he might. <laughs> that's, that's, <yeah. laughs> so that 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 that's part of that process. And then when you go play it live, you know you might not play all the. It might sound ridiculous if you played all the substitution chords, but you know at least you know you have the vocabulary to to choose from. So. On, on that, yeah, so that, that just rough structure and then, you know, just kind of, yeah. Definitely, 100%. This is, this is an improvised <laughs> thing, so we'll see what happens, you know, no guarantees either. Um, all right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue. I'll play another one, so save any questions. Um, 
this is going to be a uh, satin doll. So I got, I'm playing some standards too for those of you who might not be intense jazz fans. Maybe you recognize some of these, these tunes. So we'll have some fun with this.
Thank you. Thank you so much. So I don't know. This is a question for, for my dad. But was that the first jazz tune, or was it was it there will never be another you? No, that was that was the first one. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> mistaken the first announcement, but that was the first jazz tune. And funny thing was um, the first way I learned how to play it really was more so with walking bass lines. So that's an interesting thing when you're playing solo piano because I don't know. It, it could be nice in moderation, but sometimes. If you're just playing constantly walking bass, it sounds like I'm trying to be a bass player and a pianist, and it would be nice to do some harmonic stuff. But I remember starting out with some simple walking bass lines, and then like this, for example. <laughs> but uh, something about it's cool, and I, Bill always says I have this like Monty Alexander vibe, and he always <laughs> walks bass lines and swings, and it's fun. like a nice, uh, nice group. So I like to throw it in once in a while, um, and I think this is a, a fun tune to do it. So any questions on Satin Doll? <laughs> cool. All right. I'm going to keep, uh, keep on moving now. We're going to bring it back to some Joe Beam. So Joe Beam fans in the house? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I'm going to play an original. Yes. So this is uh, a Joe Beam tune called Once I Loved. And um, hope you enjoy, but uh, it's also one of my favorites. Everything I'm playing tonight is some of my, all my favorite tunes. <laughs> so, the ones I love.
Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Our hands in the air. <laughs> All right, so some original stuff. So I don't think it's possible to do, um, to do a jazz concert without playing a blues. Right? I think everyone could agree. So um, this is an original blues, um, and it has a couple different elements in it. Um, it kind of was inspired by <laughs> some chords <laughs> that Bill was showing me, and, um, and also some, a scale that's very important. So there's a line in there at the end, and it comes from the altered scale, which is a really cool sounding scale in jazz. It sounds like this. So it's a cool sounding scale. So there's a little line in the end there that you'll hear in the melody. Um, but um, we're going to have some fun. We'll stretch out and, and see what happens. So hope you enjoy. This is called On the Hunt. I don't know for what we're hunting for, but On the Hunt <laughs> for something. That's hard, by the way. I don't know how to name jazz tunes. Does anyone know? Like, how do you, anybody know? All right. Uh, can I get a sip of water? <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't really think of that, but that's <laughs> perfect. Oh. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. So that's um, blues is always fun, <laughs> and um, I always hear when I play blues, I always think of this is again Prof. Since he's in the house, you know, we got to shout him out every chance we get. But <laughs> so this, I'm going to do a, a Bill impression now. So this is this is real, yeah. Listen, you said you're coming to the show, so that's it. <laughs> you're on the hot seat. So every lesson, right? So Bill's, you know, he listens from, from the side, and he says, then at the end of the piece, he listens, and he goes, well, you know, you could, you could do something like this. And then he would sit down and just play something like, you know, like. And he would do something crazy like that. And he'd be like, yep, I could have done that. You're right. <laughs> So, and then he'd say, get the phone out and record it so you can practice some. Anyway, good times, good times. All right, so we have um, a lot of Italians in the house, my family. Yeah. So, uh, so we got to play some, something Italian. So this is, uh, how many of you have seen the movie Cinema Paradiso? Okay, Cinema Paradiso. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I say it in American accent. Um, so there is a really, Ennio Morricone wrote the score, and uh, there's a really nice theme in the middle um, that uh, I'm going to play now, but we'll, we'll play it straight. I promise no, no jazz substitutions, and then I'll put a couple, couple spot changes in there, and we'll see what happens. But this is uh, the theme from, Love's Theme from Chino de Paradiso.
Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's a, I really love that theme. And that whole movie is filled, that whole soundtrack is, is ridiculous. If you haven't seen the movie, check, just listen to the soundtrack. It's one after the other. So um, should I pause for any questions? Any questions? Or, it's hard to see you all, by the way. So everyone good? Feeling good? All right. Oh, OK. Yeah. Now, does that translate into jazz for you? Does that, does that give you a structure that helps you play jazz? Definitely, 150 percent. And I still. Uh, Thank you, Father. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Call him Papa. So thanks, Papa. <laughs> but um, but yeah, 100 percent. And um, I think definitely technique-wise, it still helps me. So there's still a component of that. And then the other thing was um, sight reading. And uh, this was a great story, actually. So the first, I'll tell you when, the first time I had a sight read for, for money. <laughs> so I did a cruise ship contract. So if anyone's been on a cruise, I was in the show band. So, you know, we do these production shows. And, um, and I remember joining the ship, and there was no, you know, I was the only one joining the band. Everyone had already played all the music. And I remember going on stage, and there was no time for rehearsal. It was just like, here we go, we're playing. And... Rewinding a couple of years, every, every lesson, sight reading was a part of the lesson. So that kind of ties in with the classical. Um, you know, always reading something new every day, both hands, not just jazz lead sheets. So 100% and uh, I'm happy that I have that base, you know, so. When you select the song to play, do you start with the composed, uh, published, in, published song and then transpose, or do you work with the original song? Uh, in, in this context, like a jazz context, yeah. So, for example, that one, I you know I would listen to the melody, you know, and um, and I actually had written out an arrangement. So I sat down at the piano, took the the bass melody, and for example, so the first thing is like, let me see what happens, and you know, I like this change, for example. So that's the process for me is in that case just taking the melody and then exploring and see what happens and then arrive at the final um, arrangement. The same thing, yeah. Just kind of explore, see what happens, and then try and put something for, for the show, you know? So, yes. You talk about playing the different keys. Mm. Uh, he wouldn't, that would, imagine, did, I don't think you did that, right? That would have been cruel and unusual. <laughs> that would have been really bad. But no, not every key, but um, certain tunes, uh, like for example, one that I'm working on now, just bringing back, but uh, it's the ballad, uh, My One and Only Love. And I don't know, it sounds good in C, like. But. I don't know, I like the way the melody sits better on the piano in, in, in A flat. So, you know, that's more of the, I think, the process is just kind of seeing what, what I like, where it fits nicely, you know? I don't know if I play every, I don't, I mean, I know, I don't play everything in 12 keys, you know, just for practice, but uh, I will explore different keys, definitely, for sure. Um, that's a great question, actually, because I always feel like s songs sit better in certain keys, so it really makes a difference. Um, if I play that song for you tonight, if we have time, I'll play it in C, though, because I'm still going to play it in C. All right. Um, we'll continue with something. We're going to take it to the Latin side. So this is uh, a tune that you might know. It's called Armando's Rumba. And uh, it's a fun one to play, but uh, we'll, again, we'll do some arranging. We'll see what happens, see where we go, and uh, hope you enjoy. This is Armando's Rumba. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. So, so that's, uh, in the middle, I love, uh, I probably listen now more to, to Latin music and salsa than I do jazz, which is, I'm in like a phase now, you know, so I definitely, uh, and interestingly enough, that Bill always jokes around, he says he's the, the gringo <laughs> who plays a lot of Latin music, so, so awesome, so I definitely felt the Latin influence coming from from Bill studying, and we also have uh, at Rutgers, um, Eddie Palmieri. So he was there as well, which is you know amazing to have to have him uh, to study with him. So uh, so definitely a big part of uh, what I like to play is is Latin stuff too. So uh, let's see what's next. Oh, it's already 7:10. Wow, time goes by quickly. So let's. Um, I'm going to continue with um, 
with another original. And um, this one is, um, has a little story behind it. If you're a jazz fan, you'll get it. And if you're not, I'm going to explain <laughs> what it means. But uh, this is called Tiny Steps. So anybody know what that's a play on? Giant Steps. So there's this um, jazz tune called Giant Steps. It's kind of like, uh, it's this hard jazz tune to play. Everyone, when you play it, it's like, oh, it's really fast. And everyone's trying to compete who can play it better. So this is called Tiny Steps. And the reason why is, the, this is how Giant Steps goes. So this is the melody. That's the melody of, uh, of Giant Steps. And again, in the exploration phase, I played... Uh, that's the first four notes of the melody. I said, oh, it's kind of could work over a sus chord. So it sounds like this. And it sounded, I said, whoa, that sounds kind of different. Uh, so basically, I took that and, uh, and made a, a play on it. So this it's a different melody, it's called Tiny Steps, uh, and you'll hear a hint at the original Giant Steps in the middle. So, hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. So, smaller steps, tiny steps is the is the goal for tonight. <laughs> um, let's see. I think we have time for one more, maybe two more. I think we're sure. good. All right, cool. two. Okay, two. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna continue. Um, this is a um, straight ahead tune. So it's called "Stomping at the Savoy," and um, it's fun. It's kind of like uh, I like the key. So D flat, I think it's perfect in D flat, not gonna change it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Stop it at the Savoy. Water first. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I love. I really love that tune. Something about it, the, the bridge, I think is really cool. Um, and Prof, you know, I know you would say playing over the bridge, you know, I don't know <laughs> those chords going chromatically, but just play, you know, see, hear something, right? I could hear you saying that, so um, I tried to do something there for you, Prof. Try to put a little, <laughs> little seasoning on top. But um, all right, so it's 721, so I, I'm going to do one more tune for you, um, and um, we'll take it out with the standard of all standards, but we'll try and put a twist on it. Um, take the A train. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll try and explore some stuff. But before I close it out, any final questions, uh, thoughts? Yes. Can you just talk a little bit about your electronics? Yeah. So, um, my day job, I, um, I work for Korg. So, Korg is a musical instrument company. We make uh, synthesizers and um, you know, digital pianos, a whole suite of products. So. I started with them three years ago during the pandemic, um, wanting to do something music related, because um, obviously none of us were gigging, so it was a great outlet and I found the job. And I do product demonstration work, some voicing work, so you know, programming the sounds that go inside of the keyboards. Uh, so it's two different, uh, different worlds uh, than, than jazz, piano, but, uh, but the good thing is that it's, uh, it's music related or we're in the music industry and Last year, we sent out a keyboard for the Hamptons Jazz Festival, so it's nice to be able to support, uh, you know, live music from a different perspective. So that's, thank you. Yeah, and Korg, uh, Korg has a lot of cool products. It's very interesting, you know, when I hear synth players, for example, you know, we have, you know, all this harmony and we're talking about arranging music and then, you know, there's drone music where you just, it's like these long evolving soundscapes and it's a whole different world. So it's, uh, I guess it influences something of what I do jazz wise, I think. But anyone else? Yes. Yes. So I do have a website. It's my first and last name or Luciano G Um, but, uh, I am going to be adding that section with upcoming performances now that I am starting to book more shows. So, Guilty that it has not been updated in a while, but it will be updated. So, when you say next performance, uh, next performance uh, I work with uh, a lot with vocalists, uh, but I work with a singer named Ariana Nykrug, and uh, she's she's really talented. Uh, she was um, a winner of the Sarah Vaughan Vocal Competition, so it's really amazing to to work listening to her sing. We do a lot of gigs. We have stuff coming up in August, August 13th at Mesro in New York City. Uh, and there's also this new jazz festival in the Adirondacks, which we're going to in August as well. So that's what's coming up. But um, I will definitely post on the website. So, yes. Uh, I don't have a question so much as a, a statement about tonight. I think it's been a spectacular experience, and uh, not unlike some great filmmakers that have taken an old story and brought it to the screen in an exciting new way or maybe a celebrity chef that has taken a standard and brought it to the table in a really exciting new way. I think what's particularly great tonight is you've taken some standards and given them a fabulous new personality and made them new. Again. Thank you so much. That's such a great compliment. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And this, is, this has been so much fun with you as an audience. I mean, an applause for you all because <laughs> it's been it's cool to uh, have to interact with uh, you know the audience and versus going up and then you're like I wonder if they if they're into it if they're <laughs> if they're listening I don't know oh there's a quad yes that's my cousin right there that's Stefano. Who's the better pianist, you or your father? Oh my god, yeah, I decline to answer. Right, decline. I plead the fifth. <laughs> but I will say about my dad. What's ridiculous about him is he knows thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. It's ridiculous. It's scary. This guy calls tunes. I'm like, how do you even know what that is? You know, like I don't even. So he's like the walking songbook over there. So, so yeah. All right. So thank you all again, and uh, I'm going to close it out with uh, "Take the A Train." Thanks again for coming out.
Thank you so much. You guys are the best. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for coming out. And um, check me out on my website. I'll update it with future shows. And uh, thank you so much again. Thank you.